The game of rivals never ends. The automobile space is always as competitive. Every automaker wants a name, a name that will never be forgotten nor erased by another. In every automobile segment, there is always deprivation for the number one spot. Today, we review some of the best vehicles in the off-roading segment. Off-roading is one of the best adventures that takes one to a whole new different world. Be it a game drive or desert drive, it's always refreshing and inspirational. It's more than just a norm of traveling, it's a culture, one that unites rather than segregates. Welcome to a new episode of Auto Tech Talk. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you do not miss out on anything right here on Auto Tech Talk. First on the line is the Mercedes-Benz' iconic vehicle, the G-Class. It is manufactured by Magna Steyr, an automobile manufacturer based in Austria. The wagon was first introduced as an off-road military car, then later developed as a luxurious 4x4, combining off-road capabilities and luxury in one vehicle. The wagon in its siblings list remains to be the longest vehicle in production. It has been in production for give or take 40 years. The G-Wagon is characterized by its box shape and body on frame construction. It uses three fully locking differentials, which makes it one of the very few vehicles in its class to have such a construction. After being produced as a military car, the civilian version was first released in 1979. In 1981, the G-Wagon was further restyled and equipped with enhanced features, including an automatic transition, air conditioning, an auxiliary fuel tank, protective headlamp grills, and a cable switch. Fuel injection became available in 1982. In 1985, differential locks, central door locking, and a tachometer were a distinct luxury. By 1986, over 50,000 G models were produced. In 1990, the wagon got a facelift. The model featured a four-wheel drive, a wood-trimmed interior, and an optional anti-locking braking system. For 1995, the civilian model began to offer cruise control, a stainless steel spare tire cover, and a burl walnut wood interior trim. Interestingly, the G-Wagon got the official name G-Wagon in 1994, and also featured ventilated front disc brakes and the driver's airbag came as standard. And today, we still have the G-Class in production, with a more refined exterior and interior touches, and still produced to be robust like its predecessors. The current design of the G-Class is reminiscent of its 70s, 80s, and 90s models. Mercedes-Benz has always made sure to remind Mercedes lovers about the history of the G-Wagon through its visual appearance and performance ability, especially on off-road terrains. Reminiscence is embraced by the angular and robust front-end design, clear lines, round headlamps, and flat surfaces on the side view. The luxury interior of the G-Class is exquisitely defined by the wood finishes on the center console. The dash also features a very clear design. The infotainment screen is 12.3 inches wide and is controlled through a rotary knob or a touchpad mounted on the center console. Along with steering wheel controls and voice commands, the wagon comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to allow you to connect your phone from the car's info screen, allowing you to make calls, send and receive messages, and stream songs that just suit your mood. A Wi-Fi hotspot can be added for more connectivity. Heated and ventilated seats are available, meaning you can adjust your seat temperature depending on the weather conditions such as in an extreme hot weather condition. The ventilated seats are there to reduce sweat, giving you optimal seating comfort. Buyers can also enjoy massaging front seats in Napa leather upholstery. The four-way lumbar support ensures a relaxed posture and relieves strain on your spine, giving your back the support it deserves. Standard safety features for the wagon include autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, rear cross-traffic alert, driver attention monitoring, traffic sign recognition, adaptive cruise control, surround view cameras, and front and rear parking sensors. What powers the G400D is a 3-liter turbo diesel in line 6, producing 326 horsepower and 506.29 pound-feet of torque. 
the G-Wagon is able to reach 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.4 seconds. The G-Wagon has a 1,653 pound towing capacity when the trailer has no brakes and can tow 7,716 pounds of cargo if the trailer is braked. Permissible payload of the wagon is 1,457 pounds. The G-Class handles difficult situations masterfully. When the low-range gear set is engaged, the shift changes of the 9G Tronic transmissions adapt accordingly in off-road terrain and on gradients. After the low-range button is pressed, the torque levels are increased at the wheels. This makes maneuvering possible in difficult terrains, gradients, and during downhill. There are three engageable differential locks with 100% locking effect guarantee forward propulsion no matter the extreme off-road driving conditions. The G-Class even forges ahead when only a single wheel is still able to develop traction. The wagon's ladder frame is produced at up to 0.133 inches of thick sheet steel. The ladder frame is significantly better suited to tough off-road use than integral body constructions. The decoupling of noise sources from the chassis and the carriageways provides a quieter interior and enhanced ride comfort. Looking at the non-AMG wagons, you can get the G400D at an approximate price of $188,999. I'm sure this vehicle may look familiar. It is a true resemblance and replacement of the old generation Land Rover Defender. One may be curious of how Grenadier reached a point of designing the Grenadier. Well, the founder of the chemical company Ineos, Jim Ratcliffe, is an all-time Defender fanatic. So, after the discontinuation of the old generation Defender in 2016, he attempted to acquire rights to the Defender but failed. After Land Rover had rejected his proposal, he decided to do things in his own way, which led to a court battle between the two entities. After a court battle, it was revealed that Land Rover did not own exclusive rights to the Defender, thus giving Jim the freedom to initiate the design and production of the Grenadier. $1.35 billion was initially invested for the production of the Ineos. The Grenadier is yet to be sold in the U.S. by 2023. The Americans will have only one engine choice if sales begin by 2023, the 3-liter inline-six BMW engine. The gearbox is coming from ZF, and Ineos has worked with Magnus Steyr on development and testing of the Grenadier. The Grenadier is set to be produced in Hambach, France. Price for the Grenadier has not yet been revealed, but the mentioned British price of the Grenadier is £40,000, which is $54,125. The Grenadier is a four-wheel drive with two-speed transfer case. It consists of a center, rear, and front-locking differentials to help you approach and departure angles on harsh off-road situations. The Grenadier is designed for multiple markets, be it for lifestyle, farming, or military, and be it your boat, horses, or trailers, the Grenadier is robustly built to have a towing capacity of 7,000 pounds and 750 pounds of rooftop load capacity. 17 and 18 inch steel wheel optional with Bridgestone all-terrain, all-season tires. It is also optional with BF Goodrich KO2 off-road tires. They contain three Peak Mountain Snowflake certified treads to grip the trickiest ice or snow surfaces. Similar to the G-Wagon, the Grenadier is built on a ladder frame chassis with solid beam axles and underride protection. The incorporated coil sprung suspension delivers the perfect balance of ride, off-road capability, and reliability. Ineos has made claims that their Grenadier has accumulated over 1.11 million miles of road testing in all kinds of terrains, altitudes, and climates to ensure the Grenadier's safety to do the job you need it to do. Owners of this vehicle should drive it in dirt with confidence and liberty because it is ready to absorb the dirt with its hard-wearing, wipe-down seats and heavy-duty, hose-down utility flooring with drain valves. With the Grenadier, you can drive uphill simply with Hill Launch Assist and get back down with Hill Descent Assist. And you have the freedom to park it anywhere you want because it is equipped with front and rear parking sensors and reversing camera. The seats are built to cater for on-road and off-road driving. There are also multiple grabbing handles to make it easy to enter the vehicle. 
The Grenadier is also featured with 3070 split rear doors and 6040 bench seat with storage, roof tie downs, rear access ladder, utility rails, full size spear wheel with lockable storage box, gull wing windows, and a lockable centrage stowage box. The suspension, seats, insulation, and powertrain are built seamlessly and in harmony to eliminate noise and vibrations, giving you a warm, comfortable ride. The interior also features well-spaced buttons and switches, clearly labeled, making the cabin space driver ergonomic. On-road navigation is delivered through the integrated Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, so mapping is always up to date through your mobile device. A Pathfinder off-road navigation system is equipped too, in case the road runs out. For dusty roads, you can still breathe clean air inside the Grenadier because of its air intake, similar to the one you find in the Defender. If you're a hunter, the Grenadier has your back with the integrated auxiliary high beam lights within the grill, and they come as standard to help ensure that you spot rocks, streams, and your prey in pitch black areas. There is an optional camp table that can be stored safely and securely behind the larger rear door, ideal for a break after a long day. All the info about the car's engine and performance can be viewed from the vehicle's 12.3-inch touchscreen and many more details such as speed, revs, gear, vehicle angle, tire pressure, torque, and more. You can record the route on the way and track it back and share it with others when you need to. The Grenadier is a good vehicle to opt for in terms of powertrain design, comfort, and practicality. But coming to visual appearance, Personally, I think it lacks originality. I still feel that it does not have any signature. It's built on another automaker's identity, such as its gear lever. Definitely, if you have been inside any modern BMW cabin, you will notice an exact identical lever. Please share your thoughts on these two vehicles and maybe share which one you would opt for. And please, do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you do not miss out on anything right here on Auto Tech Talk.